Well, hello there. Happy Friday night and welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. I am very wound up for this episode. I have to admit, talk about a rabbit hole. Again, how did I forget? How did I forget the greatness, the, the lushness, the shape, the beauty, the inspiration of the Wall Street Journal, particularly because I'm working on putting a magazine together right now, right now. And I know that this in my heart is like the inspiration was losing this magazine. I have quite a few issues. We're never going to get to them all today. These are all January issues of a magazine called the Wall Street Journal that is now uh, out of print, defunct. Um, man, is it a good magazine? Oh, do we have a lot to read and talk about tonight? Still going strong with the Christmas. Not, nothing's going to stop me. Nothing's going to stop me from playing my songs. The kids are like, it's not Christmas, Mom. Get rid of the Bing Crosby channel. And I was like, kids, he's the voice of Christmas. I don't want to hear it. We're going to hear it. We're going to listen to it until Valentine's Day, and that's it. I'll put some other stuff on. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not like a mommy dearest, I promise. But yeah, it is fun. Let me clean off my glasses here, and then I'm going to be able to see who's joining us tonight. I really am excited. This is a very cozy episode tonight. So I hope that you have a drink in your hand, a project on your lap. Oh, that's a good tag, isn't it? Um, and you're ready to listen because it's going to be one of these episodes where you can glance up from what you're doing every now and then, um, but you, I, you don't need to give me your full attention. It's going to be a great episode. God, I felt so good just going through these magazines earlier. You'll see exactly what I mean when we get into it. Mom, happy cocktail night. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Oh, you are ready with your grasshopper. Oh, yeah. With a tiny candy cane stir. Oh, gosh, that is so festive, isn't it? You know what I remembered, Mom? Um, I'm going to change my glasses for this. We forgot to watch The Bishop's Wife. We watched uh, just about everything else. We even watched a Scrooge. We don't usually watch the um, the straight kind of Christmas Carol, but uh, and we watched Shop Around the Corner and we watched Wonderful Life. We don't usually watch Miracle on Thirty Fourth, but we probably should. We miss Bishop's Wife. That's my absolute favorite. Um, we saw Christmas in Connecticut. We can always watch it when it's not Christmas weekend, right? But I like the Grasshopper. That is. That's the New England way to say that. Catherine, great to see you. Happy Friday night cocktail night from snowy, snowy Missouri. Well, it is still the cold moon, isn't it? It, it says on a lot of pages of the January issues, cold moon, snow soon. I've never heard that expression before, but it must be because it's the cold moon. My mom got me a moon diary that um, sort of revolves around uh, giving you information about the different phases of moon because I always say... Um, I'm so interested in, in what the different moons are and what they mean. And um, this is, well, I love the diary. It's super, super thick. And it covers uh, like December uh, right through the year. It's very thick, lots of room to write. And I think it's still the cold moon. I don't think we're into the wolf moon yet. Interesting, cold moon, snow. So well, you already got the snow. So cold, uh, cold moon, snow now. But for us, I think we're getting hit with a snowstorm on Saturday night, so tomorrow night. I was hoping it was Sunday nights on the off chance that the kids could have a four-day weekend. They were off today with uh, Three Kings Day, which I still say is that no matter what anybody says, that is a new holiday for me. Unless I was on, you know, on drugs for like many, many years, which I wasn't. I just, I went to Catholic school like my whole childhood and I never one time heard of three of that, of that day. It doesn't mean it didn't exist, but I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very skeptical. I'm very happy to have the kids have a day off, but everyone's saying, oh no, you know, it's that day when the, when the kings arrive and, uh, you know, all Roman Catholics know that. It's like, do they? I didn't know that. Oh man, these days. Kaz, great to see you. That was an exciting thread just now, wasn't it? We were going back and forth. The Wisconsin group and me were going back and forth on, um, on the phone. That was a lot of fun. I hope that you get your yarn tree. Sounds like it's going to work out. And my love, good to see you. Soon to be snowy, New Hampshire. I bet. I think we're all going to be getting slammed uh, this weekend. Uh, Linda H. Cheers. Can you tell my earrings say cheers? Cheers. I put I put on the gear for our night. I did. I put on a comfy shirt and I put on my 
on my Friday night airings. Cheers, my dears. Linda H. in Massachusetts. Becky, great to see you. Good evening. You're so ready to relax and hook and listen. You're going to love it. That's just what tonight was built for. Robin, great to see you. Cheers, my dears in Wisconsin. Joy, great to see you. I was just proofing the design book and there is a huge image of your Abenaki rug. It looks amazing. So I just was talking about you a few minutes ago. Uh, Mom says, hi, Cass. Snow already for you. We're waiting for the start of our big first snowstorm of winter. It is exciting. I just hope I can find a place for the kids to go uh, sledding. Because I think the sledding is near you, Mom. You have that barn door hill near you. And uh, we don't really have anything that's, that's, that's worthy of our time. Bumblebee B. Oh, Bumblebee, how fun. What a great name. Hello and happy Friday to you, too. Huge welcome to you, Sharon. It's rainy and windy in Vancouver. That sounds fun. Vicious. And Linda B, good evening from soon to be snow covered New Jersey. Cheers, my dears. Ryan, great to see you. Happy Friday, everybody. Gin cocktails and homemade pizza. I also just had homemade pizza. Not part of the Mediterranean diet, is it? But I have been doing good. So come on. Peace and love to you too, sweetie. Cats Gallery, great to see you. Cheers from Southern California. Mm -hmm. Lily, you logged on. Miss you too. Happy Friday night. Great to see you. Happy New Year. Kirsten, cheers. My well, if you're going to say it, I got to do it. Cheers, my dears. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Uh, good to see you, Kirsten and Susie. Great to see you. Happy Friday night. Sonia, great to see you. Hello from uh, St. Francisville, Louisiana. Happy you're back. Great to see you. Melanie, great to see you too. Happy Friday. Cheers, my dears. Susie, you did it again. I'm happy that you Happy that you did. I'm not complaining. This gingerbread beer ain't going to drink itself, is it? Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. It's really not that good, I have to say. But it is beer. So, um, you know, these are my two choices right now. Dr. Pepper cream soda or gingerbread uh, stout. So I'm, I'm going to go for the gingerbread stout, although Dr. Pepper is fantastic, too. Uh, this is why I'm having a weight problem, right? Dave, great to see you. Hello, everybody. Hard cider and buttered popcorn. Cheers, my dears. Lisa, great to see you. Cheers in Pennsylvania. Thank you for those great photos. That's going to help a lot. Lily says, saw all your pics with the kids. Love them. I just got married two weeks ago. Congratulations. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. Very rushed, simple ceremony. Well, I think those are the best. I, I like those the best. Anyway, been together for 21 years. So happy. I'm so happy for you. Starting the new year off with a great event like that. Lily, congratulations. That is so exciting. I am so happy for you. You must be so pleased. And Priscilla, cheers in Ohio. Great to see you. Diane Nog and White Rum. Oh, oh, that sounds so good. I think we still have some eggnog in the fridge too. I hope that they keep that coming for a little while longer because Teddy is absolutely, I mean, we are all, you know, pigs. But he, I'm not going to say he's particularly a pig because nobody does better than me in that department. But man, his, the eggnog, as soon as Stop and Shop gets that on the shelf, that we're all about eggnog for the next two months and uh, hot chocolate, right? Oh, those are so bad for you, but they're so good. Oh, that sounds really good. Cheers, my dears, Diane. Barbara, great to see you. You made it. Had uh, had to Google Three Kings Day as a holiday. I know it, right? Hey, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take any day off for the kids because it is so nice to wake up and not have to scramble and get out the door when it's freezing cold. I just love it. I did have to scramble and go pick kids up and bring them over and then bring them back home before the show started. But that's kind of on my own time, so it's not quite the same as being rushed off your feet to get there before the bell starts buzzing, right? It's like that game operation. Everyone's like, ah, oh, is the bell buzzed yet? So panicky first thing in the morning. Um, let me see. Let me catch up. Kaz said, I did. I'm picking it up. Oh, excellent. I'm so glad you snagged that. That was a great find. Beautiful yarn tree. Um, I'm jealous. I thought it was around here, and I was going to go, it's mine. But it was out in Wisconsin. I'm glad one of my buddies is getting it. Kaz Cats Gallery, we had 4.2 earthquake in Riverside. You're kidding. In the San Diego, San Diego area, you didn't feel it. Wow, that's incredible because there was that earthquake right overnight on, on New Year's Eve night, wasn't there, in Japan. And I know they have earthquakes all the time over there, right, Kaz? But um, I think that one was more notable. It, at least it hit the news in a way that it sounded like it was. 
Ooh, what a world. Things are shaking under our feet. Holy mackerel. Laura Lee Creations in Pennsylvania. Great to see you. Happy Friday night and welcome. I'm so glad that you're there. Kathy, great to see you in New Hampshire. I'm so glad that that yarn's working out. Can't wait to see you in person again. Sharon says, mix the Dr. Pepper with the beer. You know, Sharon, Sharon, that's not a bad idea. You know, that's why I have the empty cup in case like the wind takes me in that direction. I I was thinking that that might be an excellent thing. Great idea. Because, you know, it's not particularly um, gingerbread porter. I do like porter and stout the best. But it, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I don't have a great sense of taste anymore. Nothing, everything to me these days tastes like either Budweiser or Guinness. There's not a lot of fine shades of flavor anymore. Um, yeah. It's still good, but yeah, I, th I think I might do a mixy mixy later. And oh, you are so welcome, Lily. And everyone's saying congratulations in due order, right? Ida, great to see you. Ida Marie, big smooch from the Wilmingtons. Great to see you. I wanted to get out there for the basket making. And I can see there's been a lot of posts about meetings coming up. I think it's almost time to head back in that direction. I would love for it to come for another biz uh, busy. Visit. I was going to say visit. Ooh, visit. That, could that be something? It's like you're doing business and you're visiting. I didn't do a visit last time, right? I was just dropping off the rugs. How fun. Cindy and you are watching. It's great to see you. Oh, it's great to see you. Kaz, thank you everyone for asking me about my family in Japan. My family's okay, although they felt it in Tokyo. Tokyo gets a lot of earthquakes, right? Kaz, I mean, at least small ones, it's kind of... It's, that's at least what I was told by my friend who also lives in Tokyo. It's like, it happens a lot. It's like, I don't know if that makes me feel any better, do you know? But I'm glad that nothing um, worse happened. That is so scary. Or a beer visit. There we go. That's the kind of visit for me. Let's do it. Yeah, it's time to go traveling again. I think I have... I think I have four speaking dates in February, which is fantastic because there was a time, do you remember, where I felt like I was being super blackballed and I was very visible in the rug community and nobody was asking me to do anything. And I thought, you know, what is going on with this? So, I'm suspicious with this, with this kind of thing. But this is the year, I guess. There's, I'm giving lots of talks in lots of places. And um, yeah, everything's opening up quite a bit. I will be going to, let me tell you what the calendar looks like in case you're in any of these places. I didn't even think. Um, let's see, got a lot coming up. And if you have a guild that's anywhere near me in New England, Tri-State, or somewhere I can get to, you know, I'm in Connecticut, um, I'm always happy to go. Even if I have to stay over for a night or two, I'm going to Colorado, right? And I'm going to take Teddy on the plane with me so we can see all that South Park foolishness. That's what he wants to do. But, um, yeah, I love doing these trips. I really do. So let's see, um, January is still pretty quiet. Um, I've got two talks in one day on the 21st, the Darien Guild, which I think is the Nutmeg Guild. I'm doing that in person. And then I have one later in the day. I'll put this all up on my, um, I'll put this all up on my, my website. I've got two on the 21st and then I go to Colorado and I'll be in Colorado with that guild on the 23rd of February. Teddy will be with me, I think. Um, yeah, I'll just put these up on the New Hampshire Guild is February 3rd. Um, yeah, there's a bunch coming up. It's making my heart beat a little bit fast. I'm all set for everything. I'm always set to go, but, um, I should make them public just in case anybody, you know, these gills always allow you to come as a guest, right? And if you like what you see and you think to yourself, oh, do they do a lot of this kind of thing where you go and you work on projects and someone talks to you in the background and, um, you learn something, you get to socialize, maybe solve some problems with whatever you're doing or you're stuck with anything. That's what these guilds are for, right? They're to socialize and get together and solve problems and find friends. And many of these guilds do have people who come and talk, and I'm sure they are all wonderful. So, yeah, I'll, I'll make posts of all of those because I don't think any of the uh, talks that I'm doing in the near future, with very few exceptions, um, are really um, um, closed. You know what I mean? I am doing a series of talks and classes at... Mom, what was it? The hospital in Hartford. Um, is it Mount Sinai? I think it might be Mount Sinai. One of those, one of the um, hospitals in um, Hartford said that some of the people who are there long term were asking if I could come to a class. So I said, absolutely. I'm going to do a series of four starting, I think, February, March, April, May, once a month. 
I think that would be, that'll be a lot of fun. That'll be um, something I haven't done before. So that'll be really, really something nice. I'll keep you updated on all those dates because I get around. You knew that already about me, didn't you? Glad they are safe. Yep, absolutely. Oh, let me change my glasses again. Two different pairs of glasses for here and for here. Isn't that crazy? Man, I'm getting old. Karen says, good evening from Black Forest, Colorado. Ham and lentil soup is on and you're putting up your feet with a bourbon. Oh God, I love bourbon. That sounds really civilized. Thank you for your help today too. Lily says, would you come to New York? Absolutely. Gosh, that's super close. I would definitely come there, Lily. Let me know who's in charge or um, you know when they have an opening. I can always do Zoom, but if I'm close, I prefer to do in person. I prefer seeing people in person. Um, it's more fun for me, but I'm also happy to do stuff online if it's really far. New York is not far at all. Kathy says, did I hear you correctly? You're coming to New Hampshire. I am, Kathy. I have a date on the calendar for um, February 3rd. I kind of thought that would be your guild. Maybe it's a different one. I'll have to look. But yeah, I am I will be in New Hampshire on the 3rd. I have to check that one out. Is it, is it not your guild? I'm surprised. I know there's more than one in New Hampshire. But yes, I am. Uh, that is coming up. Long Island Guild. Yep, I could do that, Lily. That's super close. I could look on Facebook Marketplace and pick up some furniture while I'm out there, too. Everything nice is on Long Island, including Billy Joel. Uh, want to meet New York? Absolutely, I do. Absolutely. I'm one state away. I go to New York all, all the time. Love it. Easy peasies. Should we get going? Oh, there's so much to, there's so much to say. There's so much to do. Um, Colleen, great to see you. Another Wilmington checking in. Great to see you. Uh, Jay's checking in. White Mountain Guild. Thank you. It's the White Mountain Guild. That, that must be pretty close though, right? That's really far actually. I'm going to have to book a hotel because that's going to be a stay overnight. I can't wait though. I love the White Mountains. Did you see the last video that I put up? It was from yesterday. I have a new video for you for today, but I haven't put it up yet. This I was working on for the last couple of days here and there. These wool applique projects are so fast. I think this one is something like um, 20 by 24. I can't be in it with you. But this is just a simple stitched applique project on a thick gray backing. Uh, I put this together as a kit in two standard sizes. I think it's 20 by 16 and... No, 20 by 20 and 20 by 24. Uh, so one is long and skinny. And they all, they're all they on the Ribbon Candy Hooking site now. This is called, oh, wait a minute, Bird Search. Get it? Like Word Search? That'd be funny. Because there's, I think, a dozen birds in here. But I really love this project. If you end up getting this kit, it comes with these colors of wool and felt blend. So some of the felts, like this heavy one, is a blend. The solids are blends, but then I've got, you see, I put a bunch of colored wools and over dyed wools in there too. So um, this will be a full kit with extra pieces and templates. So you cut your birds, you cut your circles, you stack them however you want. Maybe you want circles that have one more um, um, circle within a circle. Within. I've only got two circles for each one, but maybe you want to do it a little bit differently, different colors. Um, I did it the way I like it, and the kits come with three little cakes of the variegated wool. You see how the wool changes, well, the sock yarn, sorry, the sock yarn changes color as you stitch. And I think it adds a lot to the way it looks, right, because it picks up a lot of colors. It has a nice old folky look and uh, bird search. So that is on there in two sizes. Hey, isn't it great? And I'm, I'm going to do a video this coming week. Oh, I can't get back to the table. Um, on how to frame that because I have a frame for it and isn't it great to have pieces oh no you know what that was you know what that was my cheers earring um, isn't it great to have finished pieces whether they're hooked pieces or applique pieces or whatever that fit in a standard frame so that conversation doesn't happen about how do I finish it well you don't finish it you just put it in the frame and you hang it on the wall isn't that ideal right so this is one of those pieces, the two sizes that it's available in are both standard sizes. So it'd be no problem to go to Goodwill or Walmart or Amazon or whatever, maybe your attic or, or um, basement, right? And you probably have one of these standard size frames already. Thank you. You really enjoyed seeing you and Jocelyn lay out the patterns. Oh, thanks, Judy. She is a good little helper. She really is. Um, Arian says downstairs 16 by 20 and 16 by 24. Thank you. I screwed that up good, didn't I? 
I should just write it down. I'm not good at remembering stuff. Little Joss, she is too funny. Yeah, Ida, I am going to chat about Magpie Times. Let's talk about that now, and then we'll get into the content, and I'm going to bring it up quite a few times. Because the reason that we've been talking about uh, Wall Street Journal again lately is two, two reasons. One of them is that my buddy Kirsten has a ton of back copies. So we're going to be looking at those. I want to complete my collection. Um, and then she probably will have a ton of leftovers. So we will keep you updated about that because they are as rare and scarce as hen's teeth. Isn't that the expression? So we were uh, thinking about that part of it was that she has this big thing of magazines and she's got a whole bunch and we should uh, we should get them out there for people everybody to be completing their collection not just me but the main reason i came back to thinking about the wall street journal is because i'm starting a new magazine with with judy taylor and it's called magpie times magpie meaning you like lots of you you pick up lots of things right you like to collect something here something there maybe you like to do more than one thing maybe you love your rug hooking your punching but there's a hundred other things that you like to do this is going to be the magazine for you it's going to be very different than the other trade magazines that we have out there i'm going to give a lot of shout outs for it during tonight too but when i think about the trade magazines that we have at this moment as rug hookers Wait, let me think about how to say this. Um, so this is what I miss. I'm sorry, I'm pouring this. I'm not like peeing on the floor. Um, Rug Hooking Magazine is super lovely, and they are publishing my second book, which should be coming out any minute. If you are in the book club, I think they probably already hit your card because my book is the next one on deck, and it's coming out, and I'm proofing it right now, and I have to say, it looks beautiful. They could not have done a better job. I... It's not that I'm surprised. It's it's a small press. It is beautiful. Um, so Rug Hooking Magazine has always done a great job. Um, they're, I'm not going to say they're on the fancier side. There's a big sort of uh, uh, breadth of types of projects that they have available and, and patterns and contributors. It is like a little on the higher end side and very... Um, sort of gallery feel to it, right? Really beautiful, lots of projects, accessible for everyone. Um, but it's very different than, for example, Atha. Atha is also beautiful, but it's more focused, more like sort of a scrapbook or yearbook, more focused on what's happening where um, and what all the different chapters are up to right now. So those two are very, very different. They don't overlap at all. You can easily subscribe to both, and I hope that you do. Um, and there's no conflict at all there. I miss this magazine, Wall Street Journal, because this one was completely different. This one was much more, this is like in the 90s, this one was much more informal, more um, of a convert, it's a tone, right? It's the tone. Isn't it always the tone when we're talking about, whenever I get in a fight, it's like it's your tone, right? It's not the words. It's the tone. It's so friendly and approachable, and it's got so much humor, and it's very hard on the sleeve. It's, you'll see, because we're looking at this for our content tonight, it is very, very, very sweet. And, which isn't to say that the other two rug hooking magazines that are out there right now that are still uh, publishing are not fantastic. I love them both a ton. But I miss Wall Street Journal because it had this, this added layer of uh, personality and charm right? that I miss. And in putting together Magpie Times, this is what I really want to capture. Two things. That informal voice, right, that reaches out three things, that reaches out to both the seasoned rug maker and the absolute beginner who isn't, hasn't tried yet, might not try this year. They're going to think about it first and then jump in. I also want it to be, like Atha, a collection of a lot of people's work, right? It's not the me show. It's not the me and Judy show. I want it to be our group effort. I want lots of content in there. And if you've heard me talk about Magpie Times and give shout outs for content, uh, the first issue, the theme is historic gardens, right? We would love articles about historic gardens near you, rug designs, finished rugs. I know this is short notice because we need this by maybe a little bit flexible, but February 17 to get the March issue out on time, both hard copy and digitally, right? Which doesn't mean PDF, like high quality digitally. The website is going to be uh, built around it so that there's also video content. And for example, if I do, um, 
if I do an article on something and then I go to the place and I shoot a video, that content will be there. So there's a lot more to it. Um, and, and videos of actually working on projects, those will be loaded onto the subscriber page too. So um, first issue, historic gardens, right? And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, you know, uh, there's this garden from when I was growing up. Um, I think about it all the time. Maybe I could do a small rug design or put something together, or at least put a pattern together, or just write an article about it and give me a photograph of it. That's great. We have to do a little bit of heavy lifting with this first article because it's coming, the first issue, because it's coming up soon. I can use all the help I can get. And if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I watch Diana all the time. I feel like I know her, but she doesn't know me. And I feel awkward writing to her because she doesn't really know who I am. That's not a thing, right? That's not a thing. Oh, I'm such a beginner. What if I send something and she doesn't really want to print it? That's not going to happen. If you send something, it fits this theme, we're going to print it and we're going to love it, right? It's going to represent you and other people are going to be able to relate to that, right? So make sure that if you have any thoughts about things that you might want to contribute, it doesn't have to be rug related. It's any fiber arts, right? And even pushing it at that. So whether you do any kind of rug making, any kind of needle crafts, including quilting, uh, cross stitch, needle point, anything like that would be fantastic. Knit crochet, anything like that, felting, needle felting, mini punch, all of those, everything things on a loom, woven types of tapestries and rugs, also fantastic. If you do things that fit the theme of the art of the issue, Historic Gardens, maybe you make your own perfume out of um, flower leaves. I would love to have that in, in this magazine, right? I would love to have that. It's just another crafty kind of thing. When I say crafty, that is a good thing, right? Um, it's just another thing that other people might see and say, I, I wanted to take a little break from my project. That's, a, that's something I would really get into. Uh, if you have recipes, unusual recipes, the issue will come out in March. So if you have, people have been sending in recipes for the coolest things, like some kind of flower lemonade, right? Violet lemonade. And there was a few things that came in that were over the top, incredible old time family recipes. If you have a recipe or something from a book that you do every year and you're thinking, oh, that would fit really well. That's a really unusual thing fits the theme, please send it in. Recipes, anything that you can think of, even bounce stuff off of me, I will definitely answer you. Uh, but please send to ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com and write magpie or magpie times in the title so that um, some of the girls who help me go through the email and set things out for coffee time, cocktail time, gallery night, I know that's for me and to look at it quickly because we are on a bit of a time thing. Barbara says many people, wait a minute, change again, sorry. Barbara says, um, many people walk by, but I always pick up the county register, country register in the antique shops. It's free in on the, uh, in, in on newsprint, but it has a, the variety and tone. Exactly. It has that old timey charm, doesn't it? Conversational, right? It's just different. Magazines aren't like that anymore. And that's why I love my old copies of like early American life, um, Victoria when it first came out I still like it but when it first came out it was like unbelievably exciting there's a bunch of magazines that um, you just flip through them and the way that people are dressed is very nostalgic for me being a child of like the 70s and being an older girl in the 80s just very nostalgic for me looking at the ads and the products that were sold even the personals mom you had a few art projects that you put into magazines in the back the Sherlock Holmes poster that you drew, right? Um, I love looking at all those ads. The Wall Street Journal is very rich in this stuff too. We are trying not to do any advertising in Magpie Times, um, except for people who are writing an article and advertising their business. So for example, I did get in touch with the woman, Lisa, who has the farm in Massachusetts where she grows flowers for dyeing and she dyes wool. She is gonna work on an article and I will put like a half page ad for her business at the bottom of that article so nobody can miss it because if you're thinking oh interesting I think I could do that I could do natural dyeing with flowers particularly now that I know exactly what to do because it's been explained to me there's the ad right there so in those situations uh, anybody who's contributing every anything is very welcome to advertise but we're not taking out 
ads because then you end up with vogue or cosmopolitan don't you and all you've got is ads and people are going well how much of this did i is, is like worth the money how much did i pay divided by how many pages I actually have content it's not nice when you notice that is it um, Lily says, I agree. I love needle felting, beading, needlepoint, crochet, and more. Those are all fantastic things. I'm glad you said beading because that's another one. To be honest, I do rug hooking, but I love punch more. Yep, that is great. Yep, make sure you message me. Any kinds of ideas, if you need any clarification, please let me know. But I do want to tell you, I did change the theme. I, I spoke to Judy about it of the second issue. First issue, historic gardens, right? Whether that is like a house near you, um, a historic home or um, whatever society near you, public garden. Mom, I found out today, Jay told me that in Elizabeth Park in Hartford, um, there's a famous rose garden and it is the oldest uh, rose arbor garden in the country. And it'll be in high bloom in June when this second issue comes out, uh, March, April, May, June. So that's kind of exciting. I'm thinking about that a lot now. But um, let me know if you have any uh, need for clarification about what you might submit. And if you're saying, oh, if I write an article, does it have to be long? No, it could be like a half a page. It could be literally a half page with a photo, which would essentially be one or two paragraphs. That is wonderful and helpful. And I would love to see as many different people's work in print as possible. Right. That would mean a lot to me and Judy and Going forward, we want that to be the calling card of Magpie Times is that it's a lot of people working on it together. Um, so I changed the second, the theme for the second uh, issue, right? Historic Gardens for now, but for the second one, I was going to do Country Fair. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to put that as the third, right? We're going to link Country Fair to the autumn issue that comes out in September. I think that makes more sense because I think with Country Fair, a lot of people are going to want to submit uh, rugs that include, for example, things that you would find at a fair like vegetables and pumpkins and things like that. And it might not feel right uh, in the middle of summer. So I'm st we're still going to do Country Fair, but that is going to go together with the, I haven't thought of the name for it yet, but for a larger fall issue. So the issue after Historic Gardens, the for May, June. The June issue is going to be, drumroll please, Midsummer Magic. So the theme is like two things. Um, it's going to hit you right in the summer, right? So like fairy houses, gnomes, mushrooms, elves, these kinds of compositions with magical elements. Fireflies, mason jars, you know, um, all the magic of summer, maybe a little bit of Shakespeare in there, maybe a donkey wearing a crown, that kind of thing. Midsummer Magic, however you see it. You might see Midsummer Magic, second issue. You might see Midsummer Magic as um, something magical that you do every summer. And then that's a article or that's a rug or that's a great big paragraph that accompanies a beautiful piece that you've already made or that you might make. Um, so that would be the second issue. But please focus on the garden issue first. I really want, we want to be over 100 pages in count and we want it to be really great that's hard to do with no advertising but let's do it together right so okay let's see oh diane great to see you happy new year to you too you are in fort worth country fair would be better suited to autumn you're right mom i was just thinking about how people like to hook or work on projects before the season comes i'm always right on the season because i don't like working on things before personally i like working like the day before but I know other people work differently, but I think it will work better later. And I do want a good kind of fantasy issue second with like lots of fantasy characters and fun. You'll think of better things than I just named, I'm sure. But those are the two that are coming at you. Now, to shape this up better, let's start looking at Wall Street Journal. It was so, It is the inspiration. This is the reason I, I even wanted to start a magazine a few years ago when we first looked at Wall Street Journal. I'm going to show you. I have a bunch of these in the slideshow. Oh, thanks, Diane. Diane, I realized I still forgot to send you the PDF things for Klimt and the other one. I, I promise I will do it. I'm such a ding dong. I'm telling you. I really am. I need somebody over my shoulder all the time that's not a devil. So let's come over here and, um, yep, yeah, let's look over here for a minute. Let me see what I've got in order. What do I have in order? I wanted to show you this really quick because during the Wednesday episode when Judy was with me, do you remember she was talking about this rug? And I'm not sure if you saw it well. 
she was talking about oh karen says how to make a fairy garden would be fun wouldn't it be fun i mean really i love fairy gardens not not just the element of the fairies and all that which i love a lot but also all those beautiful little houses made of pebbles and driftwood and little rocks and pieces of bark so much fun and there are a lot of fairy houses in different places if there's a fairy house where you are or like a fairy village there is for us at the florence griswold museum wouldn't i mean talk about a great composition i see that as a primitive composition cute little houses that look like a vill village but it's a tiny village because it's a fairy village uh, diane says you are definitely not editing oh diane thank you i definitely have my moments man do i have my moments but you know judy the reason judy brought this rug up was because she was saying she, she was talking very romantically about this rug and i really enjoyed it she said this is why she loves rug making and this is this is the kind of thing that we're talking about in the article as well because you know judy does a lot with restoring rugs she's got save that rug her book her classic book that we looked at um, but also she's got the um, tell me exactly i know somebody knows exactly the name of the facebook group aren't, aren't i a jerk um uh rug repair and restoration something like that um i know so somebody will know and then i'll be able to say it out loud karen says felted critters in the fairy garden there you go that's perfect that's perfect little magic for the second issue um but judy loves old rug rugs and repairing rugs and she was waxing very very poetical uh, with this piece the other day and i'm not sure that the image came up for you for very long because of the two windows being open when i introduced this one it seemed to not want to stay so i'm not sure if you saw it properly but we were looking at this in the last episode and judy was saying isn't it just beyond charming when you see a background broken up like this probably for economic reasons they probably would have loved for the whole thing to be black but they obviously ran out of black and brown and tan and car caramel and khaki um, and they just used what they had. Now, some of it could be attributed to fading, but I think these are many. They wouldn't be fading differently and in such patches if they weren't all different materials to begin with, right? Thank you, Kirsten. Uh, repairing hooked rugs. There we go. That's really easy. Uh, that's the Facebook group that Judy runs, and she also does rug hooking daily. So between Judy and I, we have two... Um, I, I know we have a lot of buddies who overlap, but we have two distinctly different groups. So that's why it's going to be so much fun to work on these large scale projects together that are ongoing. Um, you know, because we, she shouts out to her group, I shout out here and we meet new friends. We're going to uh, sort of cross pollinate and we're going to, we're going to more than double. We're going to multiply many times over with these big scale projects like this. I just thought this was so charming. Uh, I loved that she uh, brought that up. Now, here we go. We're starting our episode uh, at last, right? Wall Street Journal, I have, I think, nine ish, January issues in this vignette, but, oh, Goretti, great to see you anytime. Nine issues, we're never going to get to nine issues. We'll be lucky if we get to three issues because this magazine is so dense and so beautiful, but I wanted to show you this great vignette. We are only looking at January issues tonight. I thought, since it is January, let's focus on issues that are likely to have content that is relevant to where we are in the year. We don't want to be looking at stuff right now for Easter yet or Halloween or Christmas, right? Um, yeah, I'm going to have to put that Dr. Pepper in. That is just, that's rough. All right. Let me come back over here. Hang on. Now, what do we, what do we got here? Okay, so let's look at this issue first. Um, I'm just going to show you close up what the issues look like. These are very hard to find. Um, and as I say, Kirsten, sooner or later, is going to be uh, listing quite a few. If you have extras to list or let other people know, uh, it is very fun to find this magazine. I was trying to figure out, wait a minute. I was trying to figure out how often, and it, so it's called Wood, Wool Street Journal, an extraordinary magazine for rug hookers with heart. That's fantastic right there. This was a January issue. And this was volume two, number four. So I think by volume, it was like the second run, maybe the second year. I don't have the January issue for the first year. Shame on me. So this is uh, 2000 and, 
four. Oh, I thought this was more than 90s. No, these are all 2000s. I misspoke. I'm sorry. These are early 2000s. This one is 2004. So let me just show you what the periodical looks like, right? This, this is completely different than the magazine Judy and I are working on. Ours is going to be um, too large to bind with this staple, right? Uh, it's going to be very different, but I just want you to know what the sort of dimensions, uh, page count, and content of these are if you start hunting for them the way that I did, because they are that much fun. Wall Street Journal, right, they're most of them, well, they're all staple bound. Most of them are about 30 pages, just over maybe 31 pages. So they're not epically big, but they are epically dense. So let's take a look at the inside and see it's very well done it was done in a very friendly font different fonts on different pages lots of photographs of people um, sort of shout outs to different people who would send a photo in that always kind of populates that first page let's see I just want to tell you whose piece that was on the cover okay that is Barbara Carroll let me bring you back over here uh, Barbara Carroll so this is Barbara Carroll's piece the rug on the cover is by Wooly Fox um, a Carol Andres design, that's with an E, Peaceable Artists, hooked by Bonnie Smith of Ivy Cottage Rugs. To order the pattern, see the page. So these ads are old, and this will be another interesting thing for us to talk about. A lot of the um, advertising that we see here, these stores are not there anymore, right? This, this is upsetting. Oh, another thing I wanted to remind you about with the Magpie Times, exactly what in this magazine they're often talking about different stores and there is a lot of advertising um, of different rug stores that 90 percent of them are just not there anymore so in magpie times we want to do at least one feature every month if not more on a brick and mortar store whether it's a rug hooking store a quilting store someplace where you get ribbons someplace where you get something that you do your fiber arts with and particularly the older ones um we want, we want to see those in print. We want to document that and shore up that history before, God forbid, there really aren't any more of these kinds of stores around, right? So be thinking about that too. What might be in your area um, that you could send a photograph or a little paragraph? If you feel like, oh, I would love to contribute, but I'm not a good writer, I can do the writing part. Send me material. We could even do a little Zoom call, whether you're doing just a short article or a few paragraphs. I can definitely help you. You could even send me your thoughts or send me, you know, on Facebook, a, a lot of my buddies I do the recorded thing with on the chat and just, you know, like speaking into it. And I can always transcribe or transpose or overwrite so that it sounds right and then check with you to be sure that you like what I wrote for you. But I'm happy to help out with stuff like that, too. That's what me and Judy are doing. That's what we're here for, right? It's not just me. It's Judy, too. So make sure that you jump in if you have thoughts as we go along and talk about this. Barbara Carroll makes a suggestion in her catalog concerning this rug. And she says, great for the center of a table. Use old, soft colors for a quiet, antique look. The background for this rug was an antique white wool I over dyed in a big kettle of dark tea. Now we're just, the background is like the Tiffany blue, right? But we're looking at the actual rug. The wool was divided into several smaller pieces and added at intervals of about 10 minutes. Now, why did she do that? Well, because she wanted some of them darker and some of them lighter, right? So isn't this a great tip? Just with a big old kettle of dark tea. There you go. Bob's your uncle. You get this beautiful marble cake background. Isn't it gorgeous? Uh, this is done in order to get a variety of values. The lightest piece was used for the faces of the angels. For the wings, a dark gold, as is plaid, was used. Other wool, such as hair, hearts, and flowers, were taken from scraps, also chosen to create variety. Some small strips of color were used once only. See, isn't that nice being a little magpie like that and just using one strip here, one strip there, right? Why not? Interest in variety. And it makes your piece, this is me talking now, and it makes your piece look more sort of antique, doesn't it? More sort of folky and old-timey. Bonnie says, I like using leftover scraps from other rugs. It makes me think of how my rugs are like family. They are all related isn't that charming? You see what I mean right there on the first page? Haven't even turned the page over yet. Um, 
just it, it's just so sweet and we immediately get I turn the page over we immediately get some beautiful ads and a recipe right this is why I want to do recipes in magpie times there is a recipe for chicken breasts a l'orange and this has got to be delicious I won't I won't read it to you but it is a it's a gorgeous recipe I know I've heard of duck l'orange but I've never heard of uh, chicken l'orange but the format looks like this this is the recipe here on this page and then beautiful ads like that my cottage rug rug hookers delight filling the pages now this one was in this was on north custer in colorado springs colorado what do you think karen is that one still there um my cottage rug. oh no i'm sorry ivy cottage rugs that looks so cute fine wool so some of the i mean there's lots of ads here and it just breaks my heart i remember last time we looked at these wool street journals i looked up everything everything on every page and like none of it was there it really was heartbreaking and worrying and then there was this nice thing that i noticed hold on i really liked this hold on oh wait a minute boop boop um this is a close-up of the page you see this photo they have they're showing a little vignette and i'm just loving that that cat is from their first issue on the cover and that became their logo now i'm gonna say it if you unfortunately you don't know that store karen it's pro i hate to say it it, it, it might not be there I was just wondering because I bet you would know it if it were there. Um, look at this little image in black and white. Somebody posed this vignette with the with the iconic cat, the original cat, with some sewn up calico things and little do little rag dolls, with some cute kind of eastery characters, a teddy bear coming out of a bag. I am I would give a, an organ for well it depends on the organ but for this tote bag that says I read the Wool Street Journal if anybody ever sees it or has it and wants to sell it to me please I would absolutely love to have this bag um, just it, it's just an example of an absolutely precious vignette that you see there are a few pages of color in this magazine but it's just the, obviously the cover is color and there's a few pages in the center that are color, like three or four, but the rest of it is in black and white. It does not take away from the mystique uh, of it at all. Judy says, I always imagine family clothes worn to scraps when seeing these types of backgrounds. So much heart in pieces like this. It's so true, isn't it? That's exactly how I feel. Diane says, everything I love in that photo. I know it, right? Everything. I love vignettes like that. See, in, in contemporary magazines, I'm not making a statement about Atha or rug hooking because I love them both. But I mean, in general, in magazines, you would fully expect to see vignettes like this, for example, in Country Living or something in the 80s and 90s. I wouldn't expect to see it in there now. That's why it really stands out because we just don't see stuff like that anymore. Everything is very sleek. Uh, and everything has a big dollar sign on it so um, you just don't you just don't see that anymore I think that's why it strikes us as being a bit of an anomaly and, and hits you in the heart uh, and then there are pages with uh, letters that people write in to say how much they loved the Wall Street Journal loving the issues and then there's a page of musings and meditations um, and they use a bunch of quotes. I'll show you. I'll show you one. This one is about uh, giving thanks. I marked some in a future episode. I'll read some of those to you. But a page of quotes, right, taken from different sources, attributed or anonymous, taken from different sources. So cute. And then we get into um, some really cute articles. There's always a feature that's called pillow talk, right? So there's not. It's not like there's tons of visuals, but the visuals that are there come on are super super cute um, there's always a feature called pillow talk that relates to a pillow that is made later on let me see if I can find the pillow real fast um, I might have a picture of it that's why I want to check let's see uh, pillow talk is is real specific it's it's a pillow so that should be easy to find I can always come back to it oh there it is so this is the pillow talk this isn't one of the articles I pulled but it's a beautiful hooked pillow with a doll vignette that's hooked right onto either burlap or linen just the letter B for the family name I guess um, how long was was uh, the publication in print Kathy I think uh, let's see um, 2004 I think for about I, I about five years 
Um, so it's very finite. This must have been exhausting. And I know some of you have written to me in the past to tell me about, I think there's two women, possibly family members that ran this. I have this in my back emails. You know, we should really, we should really do an article on the Wall Street Journal and the Magpie Times. Does anybody want to do that? Seriously. Just because I've got about four feature articles to write and I also am running a business and dealing with my feral children. Does anybody want to do an article on um, maybe somebody knows something more than I know or knows uh, the people who ran it? I would love, I'm just going to shout it out. I'm going to put it out there to the universe. I would love an article on the Wall Street Journal because for me that is the inspiration for working on the Magpie Times at all. Um, I would love to have that as a huge tribute in the first issue, please. So there's also the pillow talk. And then we get into uh, Karen Kale's um, regular feature that is called Miss Prim Writes. And in every episode, she writes on a different subject. In this episode, which is so cute, and here's Miss Prim down here. In this episode, she writes on a subject that is perfectly fitting for January. Winter projects. Get rid of those winter blahs. Right? We need this now, don't we? Um, let, me, let, me, let me just check and make sure I didn't miss any photos. And then I want to look at this together. Hang on. Nope, close your eyes. That's gone. That's gone. We're going to stay right here just for the moment. Let me have a sip and I want to read part of this article to you because it is super duper charming. Karen Kale is um, Primitive Spirit, right? That's her That's her brand, Primitive Spirit. Um, let me know if I'm wrong about that because, it, because if I'm right about that, she still has her Etsy store and is very, very busy in the business. One of the icons, right? I should really have that on the tip of my tongue. Miss Prim writes, Winter Projects. Get rid of those winter blahs. And she writes, I won't read the whole article, but I look forward to the winter months for the sense of calmness that they can bring. It may be nasty outside, but indoors it is cozy and warm with a quiet that is just right for creating something new. I am anything but blah since my rug hooking gets top priority and the weeks meander by as I hook. As I decide what to hook, I savor the planning and preparation almost as much as the actual hooking. Here are some of my experiences and hints in getting the inspiration to hook through the winter blahs. Jumpstart your energy. Go online and order something you really want from the ribbon candy hooking store. Oh, wait a minute, that part wasn't in there. I must have, yeah, I snuck that one in. A piece of wool, a new tool or frame, waiting for it to come in the mail is just part of the fun. Just type in rug hooking and do a search. You will find a great many places online. Less now, I'm afraid. And one site might have suggestions to other wonderful sites. Uh, let's skip over that part, not because of competition. Visit a creative place. This might be a garden shop full of plants. Oh, that's perfect for right now. Oh, that is perfect for right now, isn't it? Or a place that sells great smelling candles and soaps. Or a vintage slash antique shop or a great bookstore. Stay a while and let the colors, sights, and smells soak in. This, this time of year can be devoid of color, so feast your eyes on something rich and colorful. Consider taking a day trip to someplace special and pack a lunch or treat yourself out to a lunch. Take a friend along or just go by yourself. Needless to say, you are worth it. I give you permission, in fact. I even dare you to do it. I never used to go out alone, but now I relish a little alone time. Uh, to have my own personal adventure. If you are shy about being along, take some magazines to read. Uh, why you could even take this article to reread. Take along a stamp and buy a beautiful inspiring card along the journey and mail it to yourself from the shop. Inside, write a little note to yourself like, life is beautiful. Oh, isn't this so great? And she goes on to talk about some other ideas for... Um, getting organized, uh, just clearing out your head, right? Ooh, uh, call for a minute. Ooh, let me see. Wait a minute. Subscribe to it. I'm just giving one of our other tips. Lots of tips for getting rid of the winter blahs. Subscribe to a new inspirational magazine like this one 
or a home magazine full of colorful photos and ideas. I get so many ideas from magazines. I may, it, it may be a textile on a wall or a home decorating photo or the colors in a set of sheets. Magazines have the cutting edge colors and ideas of the season and you can give and can give you a fresh outlook. Um, well, here's another idea. Call for a mini rug hooking show. Get hooking friends together and share your latest projects, even if they are not completed. And if you have friends that create things other than hooking, get together with them too and look at their works of art. Why not? Creative inspiration is what you are looking for. And this party could be held at a restaurant so that no one has to mop the floor. Uh, see nasty habit of mine above. Rent a great movie about wonderful women who overcame the odds and succeeded. So, um, and, she, and she gives some movie suggestions like Gabet, I don't know that movie, Babette's Feast, You've Got Mail, Antonia's Line, Fried Green Tomatoes, How Stella Got Her Groove Back. Oh, I wonder if we can add to this list. Have you ever seen, this is one of my favorites, this fits the category that she's talking about, Enchanted April. Oh, God, is that one of the great movies of all time? Tell me if you have any movies in the thread to add to this list. I think that those are great tips, and there were more tips in that article, too. Um, let me see. Let me see. Is it possible to buy some issues? Kathy, um, Kirsten has some issues right now, and I bet after this show, we will, uh, hopefully everybody comes forward with their doubles. I know I have some doubles, too, so I need to just go through them and figure out which ones are doubles. So we'll work on this this week, figuring out who's got which articles, and we will make it known in the Facebook group. And I'll maybe put a post also in uh, YouTube for those of you who are not on Facebook so you have a chance to jump in. Uh, they are very hard to find, I have to say. And um, Kathy says, I'm picking up Grace Collette tomorrow for our meeting. I'll ask her if she has any issues. You know, I bet she probably she probably must. I wouldn't mind doing an, uh, doing an article, but I need to see some issues. Okay. Um, I'll give you some ideas or we can talk, Kathy. We can absolutely talk. This is obviously a completely different magazine, but I like the voice that this magazine is written in. I like that there's lots of people contributing and it's very, very candid, informal, personal. Um, I personally don't love, don't love to read things where the voice is like telling you uh, what you have to do, what you should have done, what you need to do, what you need to buy. Those kind, that kind of voice really rubs me the wrong way. That never occurs in this magazine. That will never occur in Magpie Times either. We'll be really careful about that. Uh, Karen says, this is also the time of year when the seed catalogs come into the mail. Karen, you are so right. I'm imagining a seed packet pattern. You know, it's funny that you say that because I have that zinnias pattern uh, in the ribbon candy hooking store and I am working on a future article on seed packets. Uh, but you could, if you wanted, if anybody else wants to do stuff on seed packets too, mine is very specific. That would be a great thing to add to the magazine. And if a bunch of us visit seed packet stores and write something about seed packets or doing designs from seed packets, because many of these seed packets are copyright free. If they're before 1928, they're going to be, sometimes it doesn't say on the packet, but sometimes you can ask at the store, right? There, many of them are early 20th century and Victorian era. Um, art on the seed packets, right? You can also find this stuff online. But Karen, that's a great idea. That's a great idea to fit into this um, issue too, because even if you don't have time to hook something, and I know many of you are very fast, um, it might be that you decide you're going to hook it and you can lay out the packet with some colors of wool around it, or maybe you want to quilt it and maybe you take start taking out your quilting fabrics and figure out how to color plan that way. Anything is great for us. And I want to also repeat that if anybody does, and Karen, thank you for yours. If anybody does any patterns that we could use as free patterns, your gift, right, to all of your friends, we would love to print. I'm going to put a bunch of free patterns into the cat into the magazine. Um, if you have free patterns that we could use, that would be amazing. We would like to have as many free patterns as possible um, so that people can look at them and, and choose some of those, right? That would be a really gracious uh, thing to do. I adore the title of your magazine. Thank you, Diane. I do too. I was glad that Judy did. I thought it kind of encompassed, it suggested that you that you like to grab a lot of, of pretty things. And I thought that's, that's probably most of us, isn't it? Oh, so fun. Um, so there's a few more articles here that are super cute. Uh, and then there's an ad for Baskets of Wool. Cami Bruce, 
Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm not sure if that one's still there. Baskets of Wool. I wonder, I know I know that name, Baskets of Wool. Do you think that was a, um, sounds stupid, but a wool place or a place that made baskets or both? Oh, God, you know what I just thought of? I could really use someone who makes baskets. You know how sometimes you see someone making really extraordinary baskets for, for rug hooking or just baskets in general? I could really use somebody to advertise baskets in this first issue because a lot of us are looking for a nice little accessory like that for ourselves, right? Kathy says, when when will you start accepting um, subscriptions? That is a Judy question. Um, she's putting that together now. She actually put together a bunch of... Um, um, I was just thinking of showing you something she said, but I should ask her before. She put together a bunch of uh, mock-up covers for now. We don't have the cover, cover image yet because I'm working on it now, unless we go for something else. Um, but she's just showing me what the breakdown of the cover looks like. She sh she's putting a bunch of mock-ups together, and I've already seen some of them. So I think in the next couple of days, as she puts mock-ups together, we will start populating the site um, for the magazine. We'll both be selling it independently too, but there will be a website um, where you can buy just, just the magazine and subscribe. Um, so it's I thought it would take a couple of weeks, and I think she said a couple of weeks, but I know from her emails today, she's moving very, very fast. Um, I also want to give a huge shout out to Mandy Cornish, who is working on something I need for that first page, the letters from the editors. We're not going to call it letters from the editors. I think we might call it notes from our nests. And half the page will be a note from Judy for in each issue, and the other half will be a note from me. And we, we're going to have a really pretty free pattern that's already been hooked on the top of each one. And Mandy's working on it right now. Whew, what a relief. But yeah, um, I'll let you know when we can take subscriptions. Submissions we can take right now. Um, oh, I know I have this to show you. So there's a few more really cute articles. Let me show you this um, piece. This is another lovely spread. Um, ooh, ooh, okay, you're giving some suggestions here. Kathy says, The Woven Reed, Margaret Hutchins in... Um, Mar Margaret Hutchins in uh, GR is uh, GR. You're gonna say Great something like Great Barrington or something like that. Let me just take a picture of. The, oh, I meant to take a picture of myself. What was I taking selfies for? Um, makes me think the kids had my phone. Uh, the Woven Read. All right, um, I'll check that. I definitely want a subscription. Thank you, Diane. It's gonna be great. Kathy Lynch says uh, Maine. Uh, okay, um, Margaret Hutchinson Maine makes great baskets. Gray Maine. I see. Gray Maine. Kathy, there was a woman at the New Hampshire thing when I was there. Who I forget her first name. She was so sweet. She was behind the rope with you there, and she had a really colorful basket. Was that one of those baskets, the woven reed? Because, man, I coveted that basket like like, like Cardinal Sin coveting, coveting baskets. That was really beautiful. This is a spread right like this that's called Fruits and Blossoms. This is from Quail Hill Design, hooked by Helen Jeffries. And it says right here, Helen wanted to hook this pattern to look like the antique rug in American Hooked and Sewn Rugs by Joel and Kate Cobb. She had a picture from a calendar of this rug that she carried around since 1976. The rug was begun in Marion Ham's workshop using some over-dyed and as-is wool in 2002. The size of the rug is approximately 41 by 38. Uh, photos of Helen's rug were taken by WSJ in front of the old schoolhouse in Arrow Rock, Missouri. How cute is that? How cute is that? You know, this uh, rug design is an antique rug, right? So this is what, uh, any, any rugs that are of this age, right? That This is a 19th century rug. Are well out of copyright this is beautiful uh colors but <coughs> this rug i've seen many times um and this is something that you could hook so this this is just an example of helen having the picture of the original rug for quite a few years before she hooked it herself and man did she do a good job when she got down to it right very famous rug and just a reminder that antique rugs are so so beautiful um you know, it really would be fun. I wonder if we should do, okay, here's another idea. I wonder if we should do a feature in the Magpie Times every month, like a, a specific article about antique rugs. We should do that, shouldn't we? And maybe, 
Okay, here we go. Maybe, um, let's do this. It'll be a few pages long. Do you have a rug that you've hooked that is based on an antique rack? I know I sell tons of patterns at Ribbon Candy Hooking, and there's been tons of them have sold. I don't know if anybody's finished any, but an antique rug, and let's say for this issue, do you have an antique rug or a replica of an antique rug could actually be an antique rug with flowers? Because that would be really wonderful to show. If you have an antique flower rug uh, or vintage rug, for example, a Pearl McGowan style rug or a Pearl McGowan, uh, anything like that, Mrs. Mrs. Harry Dave, anything, anything, right? Uh, with flowers, that could be really good. If someone else has hooked it and you know who it was, please send all of that information. But I think it would be great to have a section of antique rugs. The Pearl McGowns aren't exactly what I'm talking about. But if any of you have antique rugs that you've hooked, we could include the pattern for the rug as a free pattern in the Magpie Times, right? Because, for example, with this, if I published this spread, I would put the line drawing for this rug as a free pattern because why not? It's an antique pattern. As soon as I draw it, it's, co it's absolutely copyright free. There's no, there's no conversation about copyright there at all. You can have it on Facebook if you want it, but it's not a real conversation. Um, so that could be really interesting. Think about contributing something like that. Uh, if you don't want to do a big time commitment with the bigger projects, do you, do you have an antique rug? And um, yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. Let's run with that. Karen, do you have, uh, I have three vintage rugs and two of them have a flower theme. Send them over, Karen. Let me see them. And, and I'll try to gauge how old they are and if I recognize the patterns, because if so, then we would have to say. But man, I'd love some, you know, I have some antique rugs um, that I hardly ever take out because they're that old um, that I could just photograph and do patterns for as more free patterns for I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And if you can help with stuff like that, I will. I would love to have yours too. If you have photographs of antique rugs that you have that could be good for this part of the magazine, it, even if you don't know who made them or anything about them, maybe you remember where you bought them. Oh, that day we were joyriding through the countryside and we stumbled upon this whatever and there it was. Uh, or I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Isn't that a great place to find treasures, right? So that would be great. Um, text for me too with those kinds of situations. Dave says, I have a contender for this category. It's an antique rug with roses that I'm repairing. That sounds perfect. That sounds really perfect. Kirsten says, Karen's antique rugs are beautiful. Oh, I have no doubt. Karen, I can't wait to see them. Barbara says, should have said Vermont is a place for baskets. Ooh. All right. Um, help me remember, because Judy's not on, help me remember some of these comments. They took a picture uh, so far of the basket conversation. We need to have a secretary during these brainstorming uh, live shows like this. That'd be great, Dave. Thank you. Uh, exciting. That's exciting. All right, good. We made some progress, right? Now, moving on, there are cute things like this. Look at these little, I didn't put pictures of everything, but uh, lots of little three-dimensional things, lots of really crafty kinds of projects too, which are super charming. Mother and daughter, that one was. Oh, this is really cute. Did I put a picture? Let me see if I put a picture of this. Um, let us see. Yeah, I put a picture of this page. Let me just unlock it and make it a little bit larger. Um, this was a funny one. This is real cute. I should have made it a little bit bigger. Got my JC Penny ruler in the mix there. Um, all right. So this is called, this one confused me, this word, because I thought I knew this word. Um, um, uh, pizzering, pizzering tims, pizzering tims. Now, I always thought that this word was spelled with an S in front of it. But uh, pizzering tims, doodads, a thingamajig, a doohickey, something we can't do without. So that's interesting. I'm going to have to Google this word because I always thought that this word was spelled with an S and that it meant like um, spirit, like um, like mojo, like, um, you know, um, yeah, like, uh, like, like um, energy spirit, right? Like, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, very cute feature name now. So this is uh, Pizzering Tim in Progress, How to Get an Interesting Background. And on this page, we're seeing this project, which is like a little tote that is designed to hang over the edge of a chair. And it is hooked with, telemarketer calling, it is hooked with this cute co little coffee cup and some over-dyed red, right? It's definitely a print, nice printed uh, wool. And you can see the over dyeing on the, the tassel 
right? They actually put tassels on it too. It's a beautiful lined piece to hang over a chair so you can put your thingamajigs, doodads, and doohickeys in it. That's fantastic, isn't it? I thought that is a really cute, um, that's a cute, very cute page, very cute article. Oh, and then later on in the issue, and I thought this was really clever too. Um, there's an article about it. It's called a chair park pocket. Pizzering Tim chair pocket. One of my dearest friends had a chair pocket pocket on every chair at her beautiful old round oak kitchen table. They were used for practical, pretty, precious stuff and prose. Ooh, onomatopoeia. I say prose because her favorite little book of poetry was always in hers. School notes, birthday cards, and and at Christmas and other holidays, well, just imagine. It was the first place to look for lost things, and maybe the last, because you stop looking when you find things. That's interesting. I like how on this, Teddy, Teddy, I'm recording a show. She's like, did you hear that? Um, I like how the pattern for it is right across the text of the page. That is really clever. If we ever get to a place with Magpie Times where we're like, we have too many pages, that's a great device, isn't it? Because you could just get a piece of tracing paper out and just trace over it to, to catch that pattern. I thought that was so cute. And let's see. Um, oh, and then I moved on. Let me just uh, let me just finish up. Let me just finish up this article. Make sure. You know, it's funny because some of these books that I'm seeing, and I'm seeing advertisements from Martin Gale and company, um, and they ended up uh, like partnering or sistering or being an umbrella to Patchwork Place. I always loved when I was growing up. I was a big quilter then, but um, they went out of business this past year, which I think is really sad. That was one of the companies I really respected, and I hoped that they would ask for a book or take a book from me, but they went out of business before I got the chance. So projects like this and ads like this, that's the one for Martin Gale, um, really nice. And then more patterns, right, like this throughout the magazine, the Valentine Hearts, that's great for next month for February. Snowflake Fun, right, more patterns. So the magazine, because it went from the color section, um, oh, some of these are so cute. Oh, this was a very cute article. Let me, let me read a little bit of this one to you. This is written by, uh, the, the feature is called Ima Hooker. Ima, I-M-A, Hooker says, Scissors, Scissors, Rock, Paper by Renita Geeds. Let me read you a little bit of this. This is interesting. Okay, this is not about a child's hand game. This is an article to inform you on one of the most important aspects of hooking, scissors. This is where neatness counts in our hooking, where a wise investment can make a difference in the looks of your rugs. We use scissors for cutting paper, sewing, cutting food bags, clipping the tails on our own rugs, binding tapes, etc. Now, what type do you use? This is where a personal choice comes into play. This is an article to help you decide and realize the importance of your tools. If you use the scissors your grandmother used to cut your brother's hair, Hide them from your rugs. The 12 inch cutting blade on those scissors were not designed to trim material. There are many different types of scissors to choose from. You can easily find embroidery, dressmaker, um, uh, five inch, six inch, offset, bent handle scissors, the list is endless. Whether you're just getting ready to invest in a good pair of scissors or already have a favorite pair, here are some guidelines to help you make a decision. First, find scissors that are light in your hands. You do not you do not want scissors that give you a hernia when you pick them up or move about. It is important to hold the scissors correctly. Use only your thumb and third finger. This allows creative movement. Your wrist will be free to move in this position. Your first and second figure fingers should rest com comfortably on the outside. Sorry. Second, hold your scissors at eye level. Oh, interesting. Open and close your scissors. Look for easy movement. Choose scissors that glide as if on ice when opened and closed. There should be no friction, no restrictions. Third, hold the scissors up to a bright light. Open and close your scissors. The light should travel evenly through the scissors, showing it is an even cut when used. If you feel a restriction or pulling action when opening and closing the scissors, there is a reason that this is happening. The light will tell you 
that there is a problem. Every cut should be clean and crisp without friction. That is so interesting. That's not the end. That is so interesting because if you do hold them up to the light, you can see the little seam of light coming through. And if that isn't even, that's a great, you know, because they get rusted up and they get uh, schmutz on them and whatever. And that would affect them being able to make a nice clean cut. Interesting. Uh, but so many nice, so many nice articles in this and very, you know, not all of them are accompanied by uh, patterns and stuff, but there are tons. And then, oh, this is another great one. I got to share this one with you too. This is called, this is by Sally Walker and it's called, let's design a primitive pictorial. Pictorial hook drugs are fun to plan, design and hook uh, design and hook and are completely absorbing for others to ponder, like admiring a peaceful painting. Have you thought of drawing and hooking your childhood home, your grandparents' home, or even your present home? It's like telling the story of your life, past and present, but always to be viewed in the future, uh, but always to be viewed in the future as a collection of treasured memories. It is natural to want to record your life, a wool rug hand hooked is a wonderful way to make a record of your life story expressed with your own heart and hands. If the only thing stopping you, uh, the only things stopping you are not knowing where to begin and the direction to take, get out your memories and a pencil because it's time for you to take this simple process one step at a time. I will be there beside you. You will have a hand hooked rug for your personal enjoyment and for those who share it with you, a picture story to be enjoyed for years to come. Folks will know you better for having seen your story in wool. You will be so proud when you are finished. Maybe you will see where you came from with new eyes. A pictorial of a place in your past can be like a memorial, a way to bring honor to someone you loved for loving you in that place. Oh. It could be like a thank you note. God, does it get any better than this? Okay, let's begin. The paper for the pattern needs to be the actual size you will be hooking. This will help when you're placing buildings and objects in your picture. <coughs> Have on hand a good pencil. I prefer to use one with a hard lead. The lines are lighter and less likely to, to smear. Alternately, I love to use the, um, the you know, the, uh, paper mate the yellow pencils that twist you know and it comes out when you twist it those are softer but I really prefer those a big and you whatever you prefer obviously is the thing a big soft art eraser and notebook are necessary photographs of the houses buildings people and animals would be an asset uh, make a list of the important ideas on that list would be marriages births graduation armed forces and armed services and even even funerals Listing milestones will help you in deciding what your rug will be about. That's a great idea. Um, I'm not going to read the whole article because it's long. In your notebook, list the numbers one through five. Oop. Uh, number one will be the most important. Oh, this is a good idea. Or the central um, object. That's your main motif. Most likely it will be a house. Maybe another building could be uh, like a barn or a church next door, right? If there is a secondary building, this would be number two. Um, and I would say on top of this, if you have a design where you have more than one building and you're trying to do a piece of storytelling, make sure that the building that is the main motif is larger. Even if it means that your piece lacks perspective, it's important with storytelling that the person looking at it understands what the main story is right it's like you don't want the understudy to kind of sneak up and uh, steal the show so it is good to have supporting characters but they have to stay in their place right when you're telling stories um, then then following those objects include like a, a people a dog the neighbor's cat maybe a big oak tree uh, is that a swing or grandma's herb garden nearby Ooh. How about grandpa's old green trunk, a horse that won a blue ribbon the year that you were nine years old? So she's going through kind of a laundry list and she's talking about placement, adding horizontal lines and composition. We talk about these things a lot, but I think the general takeaway, because it's a long article, 
um, is what a great idea to sit down and start telling your own story. This is a great way to list what do I want to include? First, what do I want to remember? Then what do I want to include? How much of it can I include without it becoming like wildly um, busy? Um, what's the most important? It doesn't, you can do more rugs after it, right? Your whole life story does not have to be represented in one rug. But I think that's a great article for getting you to think about how easy it would be to just sit down and sketch, right? Even if your line drawings are not fantastic, it just doesn't matter with this craft. As soon as you cover something with wool, we're not, we don't have any more lines. The lines are gone. They're softened, right? Everything uh, looks better once it's worked up. In wool um, and then lots of ads at the end rug hooking fine wool with little picture vignettes and again when I have more time and I didn't today uh, I just kind of foxed the pages that I wanted to look at with you um, yeah we're doing great for time but lots of ads and I do want to go through these and see you know um, what's still there uh, let me catch up before we look at the next one muse Marty muse yes this, all of this stuff is serves as a great a great muse. It says another idea for a future magazine issue: making rugs from children's drawings. Joss, yep. One of my very first rugs uh, was um, uh, of my grandson Mason's dog drawing. That's a great idea. Uh, you know, I thought about having that as a regular feature, and I'm wondering could we do that as a regular feature? People like showing um, their grandchildren or children's drawings and or neighbors or whatever you know children's drawings could we do that as a regular feature would people would people send in images of drawings that their kids have drawn and um whether you've hooked them into a rug or not it could be a great inspiration piece and it would be just more great content like the wall street journal i really want magpie times to be something that you look at slowly and that you could look at many times and not be bored because the way I look at magazines now honest to God I'm, I'm they come in the mail I'm not kidding and I, and I love the magazines they're the best ones I can find I won't say the names but I have a bunch of subscriptions and I look at them like this seriously while I'm standing up and then I usually put them back on the mail table and then I kind of forget about them for a decade that's just how it's gone lately not out of busyness it's just you know there's a lot of ads uh, there's very few features, and of the features there are, I'm not talking about Rug Cooking Magazine and Atha, um, of the features there are, they don't always strike me in the right way, so it's like, hmm. Um, but I want this to be a magazine that for people who do crafts and enjoy making things, particularly fiber, that it's something that you could look at again and again and say, you know, look at it next month and say, oh, I forgot about that pattern. I was going to do something with that, you know. Bear that in mind when you think about things you might send in, because send in, I bet everybody has something that you could send in that would be wonderful in print. Let's look at the next issue. Um, it's this one. So this is uh, January 2005, one year later, an extraordinary magazine for rug hookers with heart. Um, a magazine to savor. Exactly, Diane. Exactly. Oh, gosh. It's going to be. I can tell because I'm already getting content, and it's fantastic. So far, so good. This issue is called Snow Fun. I think that means so fun, right? Not no fun, but snow fun or just snowy, snow fun. Uh, really, really cute cover graphic. Let's see who did this. Uh, let me find this before we move on. There's got to be something on the cover. Huh, that's weird. It's not in the same place it was. Let me, let me see. Oh, there it is. Uh, on the cover, Snow Fun, designed by Emma Lou Lays. An adaptation of an antique rug hooked by Minerva Cabanis. Fantastic. Very good information. Gosh, that's pretty, isn't it? It has a little bit of the Grandma Moses, very little bit, a little bit of the Maude Lewis, because it's really naive composition. Beautifully done. I love that really white, bright ground. And then that grayish sky. It looks terribly cold, doesn't it? Looks like a Jane Paddock quilt. I love her. I love her, Diane. I'm not surprised you said that. She does use all of those folky, um, irregular shapes, right? Lots of houses, lots of trees. Uh, I love her. I have a ton of her her books. Um, but, you know, she also places stuff in such a way that it's disconnected from other stuff. She uses true folk 
I mean, she's like a folk art quilter, right? That's her style. Um, she places things so that they're not really touching and overlapping. There's no perspective. There's no sense of proportion. Things are just almost like dropped like stencils. And this definitely has the look of one of her pieces. I really love this piece. And that's, that's probably why, because I love her. And this is on the inside cover before I even touch the pages. And this is one of the features that they did in this, um, in, the, in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, they have this feature page in every issue that's called Wool Street Anywhere USA. And this is uh, 131 South Water Street, Liberty, Missouri, Rock Creek Rugs. And this would feature a rug hooking, a rug making business. Uh, Vermont Folk Design, Ma and Pa. Uh, so that's the rug that we're looking at. The piece that we're looking at is called Vermont Folk Art Design. And the title of it is Ma and Pa Hooked by Marilyn Schmidt absolutely love it it is a very folky kind of takeoff of american gothic simplified with mountains in the background instead of the decaying house uh, i love that they're standing on what looks like a garden right a little bit of a garden with rose um, it's just very very simple very very flat comical touch the bird on the hat right but they are stoic looking characters like the famous painting um, american gothic really really beautiful and it says on this page Marilyn Schmidt began hooking 18 years ago with Emma Lou Lace for the past 12 years she has given classes and sold rug hooking supplies in May of 2004 she moved to Corbin Mill where her partner and friends and friend of 20 uh, with her partner and friend of 20 years Minerva Cabanis how fun is that oh how fun is that I hate to say it, is Rock Creek Rugs there? Does anybody know? I would love to think that they are still there. What a beautiful pattern that is. So starting off this issue, and there's a close-up of it. I'm sorry, I should have showed you that before. Let me take a little sip while you take a, take a good look at Ma and Pa. This is a great issue. Uh, another great issue. Let's see. Uh, oh, this is really pretty. So some pages of ads that we love, a bunch of templates and patterns in here. And then they had, uh, I am getting to that slide. I just wanna, I want you to keep up with me here. There's lots of patterns like this in Wall Street Journal. Um, we'll have a lot of that too in Magpie. But you know, there's a whole section um, for rug hookers on the road. It's like an index of all the states in the rug hooking stores. It's tons, it's tons. If you want to shout out a state, I can um, read to you what what your rug cooking store is or was. Um, interesting. Let me look at one of my states just for just for fun. Let me check Rhode Island. Rhode Island's not in there, but I bet you anything Sweetbriar was definitely open during that time because they just closed this past year to my heartbreak, to my utter heartbreak. Looks like they're standing on a dock. Well, maybe they were. And you're good with stuff like that. Yeah, it does look like they're standing on a dock. I think it's ground, though, because it's brown with, like, yellow tracks, and it's green behind them. That, that here, let me show you again. It does look like a river um, behind them. I think color-wise, I think it is. I think it's grass. But it could be. You never know. You never know. And their little house in the distance. Really, really cute. Come back over here. Just curious to see... What was in Connecticut at that time? Uh, oh, Donna's store. It just says South Woodstock. It doesn't say the name of the store. Uh, it's, it's called Whispering, Whispering Hills. Whispering Hill. Yeah. Yeah, it just says her name. How funny. And her phone number. How funny. Yeah, rugs on the road. Uh, welcome new and used hookers. And then, oh, a whole page. Okay, so the image that we're about to look at is attributed to... Looks like they were standing on their crops. It does. It, it seems anti-logical, doesn't it? The standing on, thank you, Kirsten. The standing on the crops, Whispering Hill. Is that what I said? Did I say something stupid? Um, carriage House Whimsies, that this whole page relating to the image I'm about to show you. Uh, winter brings us snowy days, followed by snowmen. Meet Pink, named after his soft pink background. Let's come back to pink. There we go. This, so pink, can you see it from this uh, picture, right? They're showing a little tree and they're showing a, uh, an, em an embroidered cloth of some sort in the background. This is a dyeing feature. And pink is the pink snowman. He's like a wool applique little flag, 
right? Little decorative flag. Um, snowman pink. So um, pink is named after the soft pink background color, snowman pink. So the person who made this up at Carriage Hill Whimsies created this color called snowman pink. And it is made, this is a great combo. These are cushion colors. It's made with one 128th tablespoon. So one 128th tablespoon of cardinal. That's one of the cushion colors. It's not called cardinal red. It's just called cardinal. And same amount, one 128th tablespoon of medium brown. Tiny amount makes up this beautiful shade of pink. And it says of all of our recipes, all of our recipes use cushings. Ooh, that's misspelled. Perfection dyes. Soak a half yard of wool in a wedding agent for five minutes. Synthropol is our choice. Synthropol is also my choice. Fill your dye pot about three quarters full. Place it on the stove using high heat. Mix the dye with one cup of boiling water, making a paste first using just enough water to stir freely. Oh, interesting. I don't do that. When the water in the pot is warm, add a half of the dye mixture, stir, add, add the wool, uh, and stir again. Add the remaining dye mixture and stir well. Bring to a simmer. Add one tablespoon of citric acid. Stir, reduce heat, simmer for 45 minutes or until the water is clear. That means that the color has exhausted. If the water in the pot is not clear, leave the wool in, in the water until the water is clear. You can turn off the pot and leave it overnight. That's interesting. See, I never, um, it's interesting to know how other people die. Um, I never pour dye in the pan with the wool there. I always take the wool out unless I'm looking for something that is mottled, right? Because as soon as you put the dye into the water, it could be that it strikes your wool. And since the dye is medium brown is not brown, right? It's made up of a hundred other colors and cardinal is not just red. Um, as soon as it strikes, it's going to like kind of do a little explosion, little fireworks, uh, and colors that you might not expect. But you, she's using a lot of water, so it's probably sitting at the surface. I still would be a bit too scared to do that. I'm going to have to give it a try. Um, I do, I've, I've done that in my dyeing videos, showing you that you could throw dye into the water. But I always do it myself with the intention of having an unexpected result that would be a modeled result. Uh, because snow, snowman pink is quite, um, is very soft. It doesn't look completely solid, but he looks pretty solid. Really beautiful. Really beautiful. And then um, there's a nice feature on making a tassel out of linen. Really cute. Uh, lots of pretty ads for places I've never heard of. And then dye experimenting 101 at a compliment. From the Primitive Mind of Miss Prim by Karen Kale. And she's talking in this article about the color wheel, primary colors uh, and secondary colors. Uh, so that's a more technical article, but very, very good. Primitive Spirit. That's got to be her brand, Primitive Spirit, because that is still there. Um, so cute. There's all kinds of little drawings and stuff here. Do you see this? Gone in for Coco. How cute is that? How cute is that? Oh. I love it. Oh, that reminds me on the game. Um, we're going to have a game page in the magazine with a crossword and a word search. And Jossie, my daughter Jocelyn, is going to put her comic strip in there. If you remember, while we were in New York, she drew Hazel Hooker and the adventure of Hazel Hooker. And it was a rug hook who finds her meaning in life by going to a gallery show where there's someone working on a loom and making tapestries. And she only did the first installment. She's got others going, but she's saving them for the magazine. So that will be something to look forward to. Oh, this is interesting. We have to look at this a little bit together. I also do, Diane, that shade of snowman pink was beautiful. Cardinal and medium brown. Medium brown is a beautiful color. The browns, the Cushing's browns for me are the best, the best browns. I have to say, I love Pro Chem straight brown, just brown. I love that color. And I love Dharma's. Some of their browns are not like anything else. Um, tobacco leaf is amazing. It's a very yellow brown and with a lot of green. And um, oh, what's their other one that I really love? Oh, I love their pecan. Um, I think it's called Black... No, Black Walnut. It's Black Walnut Dharma. That's a beautiful brown, too. That's not like anything else. And Shiitake Mushroom is another crazy one from Dharma. 
it's more of a pinky brown. Those are very, very unusual browns from Dharma. But Cushing's browns um, are really extraordinary. Um, golden brown from Cushing is beautiful. Medium brown is absolutely beautiful too. I really love spice, spice brown, mummy brown. They've got quite a few. Um, no, you know, Cushing is black walnut. I'm wrong. Cushing is black walnut. That's a beautiful color. But the one I'm thinking of um, from Dharma is pecan. It's something pecan. It's very, very dark. Very, very dark. It, it's not like any other color I've seen. It's funny how some of these dye brands, you know, they have colors that just are not like anything else. And then as soon as you mix like a grain of it with another color, it just multiplies the possibilities. It's endless. That's why it's so much fun if you enjoy it. And if you have time to put together your own kind of dye recipe book, I do that because I have a business. But uh, it is a fun thing to do. If you enjoy putting recipes together and keeping notes on things that are successful, it's really fun to experiment with dyes. And I love talking about colors that I think are really different. Those for me, out of all the browns that I use, those are the best ones. Um, Judy says, I like tobacco leaf. That's definitely one that will break into unexpected colors if you just toss it on top. It absolutely, it's crazy, isn't it? It's like a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of green, and then this crazy golden color. And then that tobacco-y caramel color comes last. So you look at it and you're like, oh, what's going on here? This doesn't look like it's going to be brown at all. But it always resolves itself in the end if you keep it moving. If not, you get a lot of breaking and you get these crazy blues, yellows, and greens on top of the brown. It's a really unusual color. It's very different. There's a, there's not a color like it among any of the other brands. It's the science of it, that part I don't understand. But it is, it's the chemical makeup of it that makes all these different colors within it really pop at different times. It's not great for someone who likes solids, but it's great for someone who doesn't mind having some flecks of different color. This looks like a good article. This is another I'm a hook it. I'm a hooker says, uh, and this is by, wait a minute, li, uh, well, it doesn't say who it's by this time. It said it last time. Does anyone remember the I'm a hooker, I'm a hooker uh, feature? Um, some things about recycled wool. Let's, let's do a little bit of this. It's going to be interesting. I like to recycle wool. It is traditional for primitive hookers, and it is economical and fun. A bit like going on a hunting, fishing, or photographic safari, the hunt for the wool brings primitive instincts to the fore. That's true. Yes, there is the thrill of the chase, the hunting down of the elusive 100% wool fabric, preferably in the winter white. Oh, yeah. And there is the bargaining for the best price. That's it was less of that nowadays, isn't there? After all, with the stain in the center front, who would buy that skirt to wear? Nobody would. That's why it's perfect for us, isn't it? And there is the joy. And we were just talking about this today, weren't we? The joy of the hunt. We were just talking about this this afternoon. Anne's been working on sweater weather, doing it not as a witch, doing it like just as a female character and in more spring colors. It is so unusual. And Anne was cutting up like a Ralph Lauren scarf and different sweaters and things she found in the background. And you'll have to show us in the Facebook group. It's coming along so well. We were just talking about this. Um, let me see where I was. Hang on. Mm. And there's the joy of finding a skirt that the skirt's pleats have not been cut away underneath. So precious square inches of fabric are there. There's a lot when you open up pleats, isn't there? And the jacket fronts have sewn in interfacings. Oh, that is nice. You don't have to peel them off and have any weird dotted texture, right? That is nice. Wow, you come home elated and ready to brag about your treasures. Just like going after a nice fish, game bird, or photo of a rare avian visitor, frequently we have to put up with either no luck or poor luck. But that is life. Win some, lose some. Then bingo! One day you go into your favorite thrift store and there is an entire rack of gently worn kilted skirts in wonderful pastel shades. Oh, I love it when that happens. I'm a size 24. <laughs> that is such a dream. Uh, and all hand woven in Scotland. Oh my God, she's ki she's killing me now. She's killing me. This is just getting crazy. Then you realize that today is the monthly five dollar a garbage. She's killing me. Five dollar a garbage bag uh, full sale day. Can life get any sweeter? 
that she just it, that was like the holy trinity and beyond of what what you would hope to find in a skirt a large size the lighter colors lots of extra material and an extra sale and says even checked my husband's closets for sweater <laughs> oh that's funny um let me see what did she say opinions vary as to whether as 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 to whether to unpick garments, then wash, or whether it's better to wash them and then unpick. I like to unpick, then wash as soon as I can. I do not want a dirty wool uh, in the house because moths prefer that. Yeah, you don't want... See, moths like things that are dirty, right? Because there's food and grime and stuff that they like uh, to eat and nibble when something is dirty. When things are clean, they don't go after them, right? So you have to think about that with attracting moths. Um, so I know I cannot, um, if, um, I'm just reading, I'm, I'm paraphrasing and it's hard. I tie, okay. So she's saying if she can't wash the thing quickly, she ties it up in a garbage bag because she's just not sure if it came in with moths or moth eggs or something on it. That should be routine. You never want to take a chance like that uh, or leave it in the car or the garage or something like that in a garbage bag or a shopping bag, just tied up tight. As far as that goes, that is always a, um, that's always a conversation about whether to unpick before or after the wash. Um, I have to say, I tend to unpick before. And the reason is, particularly when you don't know what the content of, of the material is, it could be that you wash it slightly wrong and it's parts of it shrink and others don't. And it becomes harder to unpick. It's not good when it's harder to unpick because then the chance of damaging the material that you want to use is higher if it has become more difficult to unpick. I would rather unpick while the going's good and then worry about washing it very carefully afterward. Even like hand washing it or soaking it afterward. That would be my preference. But if you've been doing it the other way and it's been working, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? We all do things in different ways. She's saying unpicking garments is best uh, carried out outdoors. I don't know about that. She gets very specific. Arm yourself with some margarine tubs, a garbage bag, laundry basket. I don't get this. I tend to unpick things on the couch while I'm watching a show um, with the light right over me. Uh, and that my really um, like number whatever is fours or more on. So I can really see the stitches. Um, but, you know, we all do these things in our own way. When we're talking about unpicking fabric, if you're new to the craft, this is a very technical article and it's wonderful because she talks about the warp grain um, and how to separate things and how to cut things. But at the end of the day, um, if you are taking something recycled that you found at a store and you would like to use it, I would take it home uh, and take it apart and then I would rinse it in like a gentle, gentle um, soap, like a eucalyon or something like that. I might put it in the wash. I would really need to know what the content was so that it didn't end up all shrunken, particularly if I loved it. When I unpick stuff, I literally just look at it and say, okay, well, this jacket has pockets. Let me get rid of those pockets. If the pockets are lined, I keep the lining in um, a different bag, right? I keep the linings for dyeing because linings are so dye rich that later on I might want to throw them into a dye bath and see what color I've got. It's like you're le when you put lining, which is so saturated with color, into a dye bath, you normally get crazy colors that you would not expect. And sometimes it's fun to do that because you can over dye stuff. It's like free dye, right? You're leaching it from the lining material. So I never throw out linings, but I throw out zippers and pockets and waistbands and hems if they're too, um, you know how sometimes you get into a hem and it's got some fuzzy wuzzies in there, like it's gross, there's grossness in the hem because it's been like that for so long. I usually can't be bothered to get two more strips out by dealing with things that are really grubby and grungy. So. I typically throw away, um, I, I take as much meat off the bone as I can because I'm super thrifty, but if things become like absurd or it's taking too long or it's too difficult, I also have to think about time because if you're a busy person, you know, time is also worth something, but I just pick out as much as I can. The stuff that's utter garbage, I throw away and I keep all the lining stuff in a nutshell. That's what I would do. Try not to rip anything, but you know what? If you rip something, it's all going to get cut to strips anyway. So I don't worry too much about that. If I rip something on the wrong diagonal or something rips unexpectedly and I think, ooh, I didn't know that, I didn't know you were built that way, I save it anyway because I know how to cut into strips. So who cares, right? Then there are some nice articles here, which I think are really interesting. Let's look 
a little bit further on in the issue. I knew I wasn't going to get very far tonight. Um, this is a nice piece. See pattern on page 25. Let me tell you what this is. Let me rip, rip over to 25. Oh, okay. This is from the Colonial Candle Rug. That's a company. Oh, 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 no. It's from Not Forgotten Farm. A winter project from Not Forgotten Farm. The project is called Colonial Candle Rug. Here is a little wintertime project for you. This little Colonial Candle Rug looks wonderful under your candles. Just a sweet touch to cozy up your primitive home. I used wools from my scrap basket, but you can use wonderful hand-dyed wools that are available, or why not use recycled wools from the thrift shop? Have you noticed that in Wool Street Journal, there is constant thought of using recycled materials, right? I mean, you get some of this in Rug Hooking Magazine and Atha from this era, but not this much, not this much. I would, I defy you to find an, uh, an issue of either of those magazines in the early 2000s that they talk this much in one article about using uh, recycled wools and thrifting it up, right? Um, I used wools from, okay. Uh, use your imaginations for the colors and textures. I hooked this rug in a number 8.5 cut on primitive linen and then obviously mounted it, mounted it onto a beautiful uh, patterned wool plaid background. And oh, this is so cute. Let me just show you the way that this is presented. Uh, like this, right, with the pattern. And then it says, in the style of Not Forgotten Farm, which is still around on Etsy, needfuls, and then directions. So the needfuls are the things that you that you need to do it. And she's using a hoop, which I also like. There, It actually says, primitive linen for backing, black Sharpie pen, assorted wools, hoop, hook, scissors, needle, thread. Boom, that's it. Um, I, really I really love this. And, you know, when you think about it, when you think about this magazine, Wall Street Journal, right, and, and just in comparison, I'm not saying that one is better than the other, right? I'm, I'm thinking about when Wall Street Journal was out, so was Atha, and so was Rug Hooking uh, Magazine, right? And I love all of them, as you know. I'm recording a live show. It's like a monster going down the stairs. I'm afraid he's going to come in and say something inappropriate or something. My teddy. He's wild. Um... You know, what I re what really stands out to me in looking at these Wall Street journals is think about it, right? If you're familiar with the other rug hooking publications from this time, the early 2000s, the emphasis in other magazines was abs... Can you hear that? The emphasis in this... Who's doing that? show is there is, teddy are you okay i'm gonna bundle him up and send him in the paddy wagon to bedlam all right okay what were you saying um well, think about the other periodicals at this time um again i'm not i'm not saying anything is better than anything else just uh, academically think about the content right there is a really huge uh, emphasis on folk, uh, the folky sort of feel, naive style hooking, primitive style hooking, um, hooking for beginners, um, including needle arts, right, in rug, uh, sorry, Wool Street Journal that was not present, at least with this kind of volume and consistency was not present in the other hooking magazines of that time. I'm realizing I think that is probably why I have loved Wall Street Journal so much because it's not putting the craft of rug hooking onto a pedestal and saying, okay, you're medium now, you're, you know, if you learn how to do this, this, and this, then you'll be better. It's not doing that at all. It's saying, yeah, you might like, you might like this, you might like this, but hey, here's patterns for both, right? It's very, very different. The thrust of it is very, very different. This is another beautiful pattern that came about. Yeah, that's it, Judy. That's exactly it. Judy said you're zeroing in on the vibe you want for your magazine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that's exactly what I'm doing. I, I'm seeing things that I like and things I that I don't necessarily like. One thing I will say about these magazines is because they are a little bit older, some of the projects are a little bit dated. 
it's not that I like up-to-date stuff. It's just I'm less into the sort of more crafty projects for myself. And so those don't appeal to me so much. And there's there's a heavy sort of craft presence, very a lot of little three-dimensional stuff and little um, diddly-doops and doodly-doos like in, in all of these issues. And while they are a great sort of moment in time, they're not the kind of thing that I would want to do now or probably even then. So in that regard... Um, it's, I don't maybe consistency, consistently like all of the projects as much as I do in other magazines, particularly now. Um, not that I have my finger on the pulse of what, you know, I, I always go with what I like more than what I think I'm supposed to like, you know. But um, that would be a little bit different. That's just kind of a symptom of being an older magazine, right? Um, because if they were still printing now, I'd be so curious to see what patterns were coming in. They're all being put in by different rug hooking companies that... Um, are fantastically great. Some of the projects for me are a little bit on the crafty side. So for me, that's kind of like, eh, I do want in Magpie ties, Times to have some of everything. But in some of the issues, um, it's like a little, it's a little unbalanced for me. Um, there's also this really charming practice of doing a lot of stuff in many different scripts, which I really love the idea of doing that. And I bet the technology, not that this was like, you know, writ written, you know, with a piece of charcoal on the wall of a cave but I mean it wasn't that long ago but it probably was fairly new technology that you could take like a handwritten note from someone who sent you a piece of loose leaf with cursive and make it brown with a brown border right that was fairly new uh, but it is hard to read some of the text so many of the articles including feature articles are handwritten and is it charming and sweet to read someone else's cursive scrawl yes um, I don't know that I would repeat that because I think now people are less used to looking at cursive. I know my kids think it's like um, hieroglyphics, you know. So this is a really cute rug too. Oh, Barbara says maybe some um, readers' funny stories or embarrassing moments. Can't get more real than that. You know, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Having that vibe of kind of sharing stories, that's a great idea. I like that very much, Barbara. Sue says, I love the energy of the children in your face. Yeah, I, they get so crazy. I just, I mean, I guess it's the time of day. I know Teddy had his friend Cameron over all day today because I picked him up and dropped him off. I know they went out for pizza one block over, and he probably had about three of these over the course of the day, right, while no one was really watching. Whew, yeah, that's the thing about having kids when you're in your 40s, right? Yeah, um, I like that idea, Barbara. I like the idea of, um, you know, that would be great for letters because we do want to publish a section of letters for sure. Funny things, embarrassing things, um, problems, send photos or not, right? These are things that would be really helpful to print. The other day, I hope it's okay if I share this, Lisa. Um, this is a different Lisa. Um, but I, I noticed on the Facebook group the other day, and I'm not there a lot. Things are really busy right now. But I noticed on the Facebook page that Lisa is brand new to punching and she's done a lot of other crafts, um, a lot of crocheting, and she was really looking forward to getting into mini punching. And she started needle pun uh, mini punching an image that was like a vintage image of Sunbonnet Sue. And she punched a ton of it and it looked beautiful. And then she punched a giant, like unfixable hole in the center of it and was like fantastic, you know. Um, cause so much of it was done and, um, you know, she, I could tell she was super discouraged. So I wrote on the thread, um, you know, please like PM me your address and let me send you another piece of weaver's cloth. And it's, I knew that I'm working on a pattern I haven't put out yet, but it's like a small, uh, mini punch pattern. That's like a little vase of flowers. It's stylized. It's very pretty. It looks like a little antique pattern, but it's small weaver's cloth. Cause she wasn't on weaver's cloth. She was on that, um, uh, pretty punch that material that's like a cot it's a thin cotton it, maybe years ago it was okay but to punch into that now it's a little bit drier and more brittle right um so i could tell she was super upset so i sent that to her i, I sent her and you know and then she wrote back and said um you know i didn't offer that to, to be be thanked right i offered it because it's my facebook page and i like it when people feel like they're being su successful i don't like it when people are, are make, having huge 
S shows like that and then there's no resolution and they're like, oh great, I wasted my time and supplies, this isn't for me. When I'm sitting here with a business and I've got a bunch of supplies around me and I could easily put something in an envelope and send it out, right? So she said, oh, you know, I, it, I'm not used to people like offering stuff and being nice about, you know, stuff like that. And I would, you know, love to try again and whatever. And then she said, oh, and by the way, I do, you know, I make the, I make this particular thing. I won't do a spoiler alert. And it was a fiber thing. And she said, you know, I've been making them for years. My family thinks I'm weird, but I think they're really fun and pretty. And I thought they were super pretty, too. So she's writing an article for the next issue, probably for the fall issue, actually, because it's going to go into the uh, issue with the country fair but I thought there we go right and and that's what the Facebook page is for too is for people to post a picture if you if you just describe it and say oh I everything was going along well I was you know I three quarters done my piece and then I, I punched this giant hole through the center um, it's it's very good to actually put a photo in because we could all see it and it was kind of like you know, it wasn't the kind of hole that, that you would be able to fix or that would be worth fixing. It would take more time to fix it than it would to repunch the whole thing. So it is good to share these things because we all do these things and we all have these stupid accidents, right? You know what I did the other day, speaking of stupid accidents? Well, I was making this. Oh, I'll tell you, I was watching Hallmark movies because they're still showing Christmas movies. So I was watching one with Brennan Elliott, who's like my all-time favorite. And I had, I, I was attaching all of the circle pennies to the piece and I had a big stack of circle pennies and, um, I realized I actually didn't have enough. So I was sewing a couple of more and I was holding a penny in my hand and I had, um, the scissors, I was trimming it down. That was it. I wanted to fit it in a specific spot. And so I was trimming down the outer circle and I had the penny like this in my hand and the scissors like this. And I sneezed and I cut the penny in half. I mean, isn't that, yeah, it wasn't fantastic. I said some bad thing, but then I was like, you know what? It's only a penny. I can do it again in a second. It did one sneeze and right in half that thing went. So it is funny the things that can happen and we should share them because it, it normalizes um, mistakes, right? That everybody makes in every project, in every project. I make mistakes in every project still. Part of it is lack of concentration. Part of it is trying to, create shortcuts and cut corners part of it is stupidity um part of it is genuine um like lack of uh technical prowess when i'm doing something specific and i go i guess i don't know how to do this as well it's a whole cocktail of stupidness right um but it happens to absolutely everybody and judy says a young person wrote into the forum i'm on the other day to ask us to type her grandmother's hand to type her grandmother's handwritten knitting pattern because she couldn't read the cursive who that's in, that's incredible but it can happen because the kids are not learning cursive at school at all I taught them how to write their names in cursive they think it's magic right they think it's like magic writing it's absolutely bonkers but it's just the way it is uh thank you Suze let me see if I can look at a little more of this before we log off. Um, let me see how much more of this content I put on. You can see that this is a lovely penny rug too. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, okay, so this is Remembering Maine. That's the name of this penny rug uh, by Lori Simpson, quilt maker Lori Simpson. Um, and she wrote, she's, she was from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and she took commissions. I don't know if she's still working there antique reproductions while in maine and visiting some great antique shops i spotted i spotted an antique hook drug this small penny rug is my adaptation of that unusual white gold and red rug lori and then the pattern is present in this magazine too how cute is that that really is in oops wait a minute almost deleted that almost cut that too hang on oh this is really cute too um, this is on the next page. This is called Pillow Talk. So this is the pillow from this issue. It looks to me at first glance, because the picture is a little bit out of focus in the magazine too. At first glance, I thought it was silk neckties because I've seen woven pillow fronts like this that are done with silk neckties, right? That's a great technique. Um, but I think this is actually quilt fabric or possibly all wool. It's probably wool actually because there's a little jar of wool next to it. But isn't that adorable? And then as I carry on, I'm seeing all kinds of, um, oh, this is really cute. This is really cute. So this feature, I'll end on this tonight because I'm not going to get even through the second issue. 
This is called Poking Fun. Now, isn't this interesting? So this is an article by Polly Minnick. I think it's by Polly Minnick. And we've covered Polly Minnick quite a bit, right? She does a lot of beautiful patriotic um, quilt making and rug making. Um, um, very nautical, right? Really primitive. Barbara says, your Vermont flannels would be great. Yeah, they absolutely would. You're right. All those strips from the Vermont country, though, the Vermont flannel company would be great for that. Oh, and God, I'm trying to remember which of our buddies, after I was talking about that and that went into the Jane Austen advent calendar, one of our buddies, who was it? Uh, posted a picture in our Facebook group of her. She said, I happened to be in Woodstock, Vermont, stopped at the flannel company and they sold her a bag of the strips. I mean, it's amazing because they're so different. They're so beautiful. There's so many colors in there. I forget how much the bag is, but it's not that much. It's a lot of material for us to hook with and craft with. So this is interesting, poking fun. Now, what I don't like about this is that the image that we really want to see is the finished tree. I'm going to show you a larger image of that in a second, but the images um, can be covered up with text. That I don't like because um, it's very hard to see what's going on. But this article is way ahead of its time. It actually talks about using a needle, um, like we would buy felting needles now, just using a sewing needle in a cork and attaching wool to wool with the needle. You're felting wool to wool. You don't have to just felt roving to like milled wool. You can felt milled wool to milled wool. With enough, with enough pokes of a needle, you can because you're basically fusing or melding um, the two fibers, right? You are intermingling, locking the fibers together with many punches of the needle, many, many stabs, right? So look at the way this, this is just a one pager, but this is one of the smartest pages I've ever seen. This is the finished tree. We're not seeing all of it. It says the finished tree is in the home of Polly and Tom Minnick in Naples, Florida. And beautiful design. Some of it's appliqued. Some of it is just poked right there she's not saying punched yet she's saying poked um and i and i don't mind that either because i think once we say punch we get confused again uh, between mini punch russian punch traditional punch i i like poked here she says yarn used for snowman's arms and scarves so on the right do you see there's kind of a novelty yarn that's like a, a partial boucle it's like straight then a little a little loop of boucle and then straight and then boucle there she's using that um, with the needle to attach right directly on to the backing, right? And it's going to stay because she's stabbing it through. She's fusing them together. She doesn't have to put stitches to add some of these elements. She can just stab, right? Poke. All of these applique pieces were attached by using a felting needle. So here we go, felting needle. And then the details are easily added, added easily. Sometimes no additional stitches are needed. As with the two hearts, please. Now, I'm going to show you some of this stuff, too. So let's look a little bit more. Hang on. For example, strawberry, the strawberry pin cushion that's on the tree is she's calling, using the term that I think she's coined here, poke fastened. It is poke fastened. She has stabbed that the, the greeny top and the red bottom onto the crook of the tree. And it's going to stay because she stabbed it on enough times. Isn't that something? I mean, that really is something to... Okay, and here's the tool. So she's basically got a needle. You could use a felting needle. You could use a, a very sharp sewing needle. It would have to be very sharp. She's just stuck a cork onto it, and she's got a very reliable tube. Make sure it doesn't come shooting through the back of the cork and, and uh, cut you, though. That always feels great. Okay, I'm not going to move on to that one next because we're going to look at that next week. But I really enjoyed this whole poking fun page. Um, you know, I don't, I, I have a couple of Polymedics books and one that she did uh, something about hearts or something together so, with another artist. I, so I have at least three books that she was involved in authoring. I've never seen her use this technique in other books. Maybe it's just me not remembering. But this whole poking fun thing, I think this is super, super fun. Uh, it just reminds us, right, the casual tone of this periodical just reminds us you don't need you don't need to get on Amazon and be ordering all the different sizes of felt needles. If you have a sharp enough awl or doll needle or any kind of a needle, a tapestry needle is not going to work because it's not sharp enough. 
but you can be fusing your materials together like that, whether it's yarn to wool, wool to wool, roving to wool. You can't attach that way. You don't need a bunch of stitches holding things down, right? The wool is going to meld together because the fibers are locked together by all of the stabs of the needle. It's going to work. It's just a great reminder, you know, that it's something that you could do because uh, we forget about simple techniques like that. I'm, ooh, white chicken chili. I'm going to put a little fox in this page here. And we're going to have to return to this because out of this stack of magazines, we got through one. But we had fun, didn't we? It was a fun Friday night. And just one more shout out for content, anything that has to do with historic gardens and whatever that might mean to you. I don't have a set idea, right? So if it's beautiful, if there's flowers, if there's gardens, um, if it means something to you, it's going to be something that Judy and I want in Magpie Times. We are aggressively looking for content for that first issue. We want the first issue to well represent what all of the future issues will look like. And this is a group project. Four times a year, this is a group project. So um, if you have anything that you think would be helpful for us for that issue, please write to ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com. If it's more Judy's things, thing i'll forward it to little house rugs at hotmail.com for judy um but i can at least sift through stuff and see what you've got that might populate that first issue so that it is really great thank you all for your nice comments oh anita i'm just logging off but it'll be right there victory garden is a great idea because that's a great patriotic idea too remember that show victory garden um, that's a great idea too. If anybody has ideas for uh, like a short article, even a couple of paragraphs, and you can find some kind of a photograph, a, it can't be a photograph that someone else has taken without permission. That's the thing. But for example, I asked Lisa in Pennsylvania the other day if she'd been to Longwood because they have topiary gardens there and I'm doing a topiary article. And she had some uh, pictures from just like a month ago, right, Lisa, that you took. And I'm able to use Lisa's pictures because Lisa took them. Um, but if you have ideas for articles and you've taken pictures somewhere, even if it was years ago, great. We can definitely use them, right? Think of what Wall Street Journal looks like. There's These are not all finished projects. There's very few finished projects in here. They're all in the center. It's pages and pages of texts and templates. If you have a drawing that maybe we can use uh, as a free pattern that other people could enjoy that is your own uh, design, fantastic if you need me to clean it up for you because the lines aren't perfect i can easily do that with the programs i have no problem happy and grateful to have it um if you have an antique rug uh, that you might want to uh, share if you have a rug that needs repair those kinds of pictures i'm looking for to hit me with anything and in the meantime have a great weekend i will see you back on monday and I think on Monday, we're going to be looking at the Wall Street Journal from the January issues again. We'll continue on with this for a little bit and uh, enjoy some more of these articles because the articles are all so different. They're filled with information, but it's like hearing a friend talking to me as I'm, as I'm reading, right? It's really, really a pleasant experience going through these and finding these little golden nuggets, tips, thrifty um, ideas, right? It's just a fantastic periodical. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend, everybody. One more time, my email is ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com. And otherwise, I will see you. Think about signing up for that Alphonse Mucha class, Design Like Alphonse Mucha. I moved it back two weeks. I'm working on a lot of stuff that i got to get done quick. Uh, lots of new products in the store. I'm about to put out a video of the new Mucha Colors, uh, the Four Seasons Allegory posters. So those are coming out, those four Crazy 8 sets. They are out, but I'm going to post the video as soon as I log off here. I will see you all on Monday when we will pick up our perusal of uh, Wall Street Journal. And until then, have a happy weekend and I will see you all soon.